In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Actress Millie Bobby Brown has gone from little known child actor to a worldwide superstar in a short period of time, thanks to her performance as Eleven in the mega hit Netflix series Stranger Things. In fact, despite just recently getting engaged to John Bon Jovi's son, Jake Bon Jovi, Millie is still just a teen, something Ariana Grande was only too eager to remind her of on social media underneath a post in which Millie gushed over her new partner. Millie and Jake have been dating for close to two years now and they frequently pop up on each other's social media where they share a sampling of their personal time together with their millions of fans, like decorating Millie's Christmas tree a few months ago at the end of last year. At only 19 years old, Millie is already successful enough to be living in a home in the suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia that her acting career paid for. But before I take you deeper into this impressive abode, I want to walk you through the series of family moves that brought Millie to where she is today. Born in Andalusia, Spain, Millie moved with her family when she was just an infant to Bournemouth, England, where she grew up for a few more years before flying across the Atlantic Ocean to live in Orlando, Florida. It was while living there at the age of nine years old that Millie began auditioning for roles as an actress, eventually landing the role of Eleven on Stranger Things and becoming a global superstar in the process. Following this massive change in fortune, Millie and her family moved from Orlando to Atlanta, Georgia so that they could be close to where Stranger Things shoots. Once there, Millie found a house where she could live with her father, Robert Brown, a real estate agent, ironically enough, as well as her mother, Kelly, a homemaker. Millie also has two older siblings, Charlie and Paige, as well as a younger sister, Ava, who live with her too. Over the last few years, this one big happy family has greatly enjoyed life in Atlanta, so let's take a closer look at their home base. For starters, the entrance of Millie Bobby Brown's residence boasts a double ceiling along with a staircase to the left. This area of the home appears to be painted in neutral shades of beige and the stairs are all carpet. During special holidays like Christmas, Millie likes to hang ornaments and festive decorations all along the banister of the staircase while also carving out a specially designated area for real showstoppers like her Christmas tree, which her fiance Jake helped her set up this year with matching M and J ornaments hanging front and center. Millie has all also snapped a few candid pics in this room with other members of her family as well. Like that time that they all dressed up in matching Christmas PJs for one big group photo. Over in the home's expansive living room, Millie can look out of arched windows that allow for an ample amount of sunlight. There's also an electric fireplace, a wall mounted flat screen TV, and a white couch that matches the cream colored paint job in this room as well. When Millie shows off images of this space, more more often than not, it involves her pets. And while Millie hasn't gone out of her way to show off her home's kitchen, it's expected that it's both large and partnered with a killer dining space to accommodate not only her already large family, but her legion of new famous friends as well. When it comes to her bedroom, Millie has made sure to turn it into an elegant retreat that features both a ton of gray and white furnishings styled with a modern touch. Since Millie's courier helped pay for this home, she's got an ensuite bathroom of her very own as well. Of course, no celebrity home is complete without an amazing backyard and she's got that too thanks to her ample open space surrounded by the white picket fence. Over on Instagram, you'll often find Millie sharing videos and photos of herself playing with her pets on sunny days outside in Atlanta and her lush, well manicured backyard is the perfect place to do so. When not in Georgia, Millie lives in a rental unit in Los Angeles whenever she's in town for meetings or to record a new movie. She can also sometimes be spotted returning to England to visit her extended family, but for the next few months until Stranger Things finally comes to an end, she'll continue to call Atlanta home. Speaking of Stranger Things, I thought I'd throw in a treat for all the super fans of that show. During the highly anticipated fourth season of the Netflix smash hit, the storyline was ambitiously split into three distinct locales, with Eleven and most members of the Byers family being 
relocated to a fictional California town known as Lenora Hills, consisting of wide open streets and gorgeous mountain ranges that resemble the setting to another popular sci-fi hit, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. As you might have already guessed, that resemblance was by design. But instead of shooting in the Tahunga foothills, which is where the 1982 film classic was filmed, Stranger Things set up shop in New Mexico, more specifically in Albuquerque. The split level brick and stucco traditional that Joy Spires and her family end up moving into was originally going to be constructed as a set. But once the production crew discovered an actual house that they could use practically, it was decided to use that location to make sure it felt like the family was living in a real neighborhood. The crew found exactly what they were looking for in Albuquerque's Glenwood Hills community. Situated on a spacious lot dotted with mature pines and overlooking the picturesque Sandia Mountains, this home became the perfect embodiment of the ET-esque suburb aesthetic that the team was looking to pull off. Initially built in 1966, this home's interior is full of original era details like popcorn ceilings, wood panels, analog thermostats, floor to ceiling fireplaces, and a whole host of built-ins, like a maple hutch that spans the entire length of the dining room. In fact, the place was so perfect that outside of some carpet and a new paint job, the crew hardly had to change anything at all. It reportedly took about a month to ready this location for the shoot, and once the actors arrived, it took about nine days to film everything. When filming wrapped, it took another month to reset the house to exactly as it was when the crew moved in. But the house still remains largely recognizable from its close-up on the screen, which is actually a good thing for the home's owners because they recently listed this house as an Airbnb to capitalize on the show's success. That's right, if you ever wanted to live in Eleven's home away from home, you can do so right now for the price of $400 a night. For all that money, you'll get access to the home's four bedrooms, four bathrooms, and its spacious 4,350 square our feed, which is plenty of room to act out some of your favorite Stranger Things moments on your own or with a group of friends. All right, everyone, that's going to bring this house tour to a close. Thank you so much for watching. And before you head out for the day, consider answering the following question. If you were a teenage actor who could theoretically be financially independent on their own, would you live with your family or by yourself? Let me know if you'd stick close to mom, pop, and your siblings like Millie has in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to make sure you never miss a drop. My name is Kara. If you enjoyed this look into the homes of Millie Bobby Brown, then stay tuned because coming up, we're visiting the homes of her co-star Winona Ryder. Bye. Low-key actress and Hollywood veteran Winona Ryder had made real estate news in 2020 when she put her San Francisco home on the market for $5 million. While she owned the Dutch colonial beauty for 25 years, it reportedly wasn't her main residence and she'd rented it out a bit as well. It's said that Winona still owns her longtime residences in Beverly Hills in New York City, which were once upon a time featured in Architectural Digest. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Winona Ryder is an actress who's received many awards over her long running career including a Golden Globe and has been nominated for two Academy Awards as well. She is well known for taking on quirky roles in her early films while moving to more prominent roles in the 90s. Over the late 80s and 90s, Winona would star in a handful of hit movies from Edward Scissorhands to Girl Interrupted to Dracula and many more. In the early 2000s, the actress took a break from films, returning in 2009 for the Star Trek movie and more recently, her popular role on the series Stranger Things. It said that her net worth at the time is somewhere around $18 million, which has afforded Winona some beautiful and comfortable homes over the last couple of decades. This includes one or two beautiful villas in Los Angeles, a lavish apartment in New York City, and her former San Francisco abode. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, and today we're looking at the homes of Winona Ryder. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. In 
2020, Winona Ryder listed a home she'd owned in San Francisco for 25 years. Classic Dutch colonial abode was listed at $4.9 million while she had purchased it way back in 1995 for $1.3 million. Located in the Cow Hollow neighborhood, the Victorian home was built back in 1902 and modernized plenty since to feature all the present day creature comforts you could desire. Cow Hollow is one of the most affluent neighborhoods in San Francisco and Winona's three level home boasted 3,140 square feet of space with three bedrooms, two full baths, and two half baths. While they updated the home throughout, it was still able to maintain the period detailing of the original residence from years ago. Situated on a high spot of the exclusive neighborhood, the property borders Marina District to the north and the posh Pacific Heights to the south. A gated courtyard leads you to the side of the home where a cherry red front door is located, opening to a foyer. Here, there are original hardwood floors, leaded glass windows, and a switchback staircase with decorative spindles. Near Nearby, you'll see a formal sitting room which faces the street via more leaded windows as well as a traditional fireplace, while the second and more casual living room boasts a nearly identical fireplace too. The sunlit main level also boasts a dining room which is attached to the living area and this space opens through glass sliders to a sprawling deck with amazing views over the bay. You can see all the way towards Angel Island State Park from here and it serves as a great option to dine al fresco if the weather permits. When it comes to food prep, the modestly sized but well arranged kitchen is stocked with designer stainless steel appliances, light grey quartz counters and glass fronted cabinets. There are reportedly three bedrooms on the upper floor of the home. The plans show that one includes a large vintage inspired private bath, while the other two can function as a grand suite. This grand suite is made up of a shared entranceway or mini hallway, which branches off to a walk-in closet and another vintage style bath. Bigger of the suite's two rooms boasts a fireplace that resembles a French chateau, while both rooms offer glass doors opening to views over the bay. These views even show famous landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and Alcatraz Island. The lower level is home to a laundry room, bonus space with powder room, the garage, and a media room that opens up to the backyard. Considering its ground level, it's not an actual basin. While outdoor space is quite limited in San Francisco, Winona's former home boasts a large brick terrace, a small deck hidden in the trees, and a lush garden, all within a deep backyard. While Winona owned the home for so many years, it's not clear when she last occupied it. It popped up for rent a year prior at $15,000 per month and it seems as though it had been cleared of personal belongings and staged with generic furniture. While it flew under the radar and went down in a discreet deal, it was reported that Winona also dropped $2.2 million through a blind trust for a home in Hollywood back in 2016 and it appears that the actress still owns it. Winona's home here is perched near the top of the Outpost Estates neighborhood in the east area of Hollywood Hills, Los Angeles, which is a celeb-packed enclave. Not to mention it's only a five-minute drive to Hollywood and popular hiking spot Runyon Canyon. The two-story abode is built in a Mediterranean style and was constructed back in 1947, spanning 2,154 square feet of space. Within the 0.33 acre lot, there's a gated entryway out front with a brick courtyard and fountain, and on one side a two-car garage. Meanwhile, the backyard of Winona's home has an oval-shaped swimming pool and a unique unique feature of the spot is that it has no neighbors on either side for ultimate privacy. It's on a peninsula surrounded by roads on three sides and open land on the other. Inside the home, there's some elegant and vintage details including the intricate chandeliers in nearly every common room. The kitchen and family room are constructed in an open plan like a grand living area with a high wood ceiling overhead and there's also a fireplace here. The attached kitchen boasts stainless steel appliances and a bar which overlooks the sitting area while there's also French doors leading outside. There's also another living room with fireplace nearby and a cozy sized dining room. Elsewhere in the home, there are three bedrooms, one of which is on the ground floor, while the master retreat is upstairs and made complete with a personal sitting area as well as a fireplace. This bedroom also overlooks the pool area out in the yard, which has more hedges and gates surrounding it to keep away any unwanted attention. 
It's also believed that Winona still owns her other two homes, which were previously featured in Architectural Digest, one in New York City and another in Beverly Hills. In New York City, she has a sophisticated apartment with high ceilings in a reported landmark downtown building, while her spread in LA is a modest-sized 1920s Mediterranean bungalow in Beverly Hills, which she had restored to its original state. From her feature in Architectural Digest way back in the 90s, we can see that Winona's homes at the time were feminine and charming. She drew help from her friend Kevin Haley, an actor who's also dabbled in decorating as a hobby. Her 1920s home had been stripped of its original Mediterranean charm by upgrades and Winona, well she wasn't a fan of this. She even called these upgrades creepy. She saw what her friend Haley had done in his own apartment and loved the aesthetic and trusting him to help her out with her own places. He worked on restoring the actress's home as close as possible to the original, having the orange stained ceiling sandblasted from the timbered ceiling and saved wrought iron hardware and curtain rods. The tiny patio and sloped backyard here was also transformed into a romantic garden. The first piece purchased for the home that started the theme for the design was a 19th century chandelier with amethyst crystal drops located in the dining room. Then there were more jewel toned accents added in the living room and other spaces to blend, for instance, like the velvet chairs. The living room is also comfortable and informal, which is what Winona wanted for entertaining, while in the entry hall, there's limestone pavers as well as a sweeping staircase. Haley turned a small space upstairs into an open dressing room for Winona with whimsical lace patterned glass doors as well as a mirror dating back to the 1940s while her master suite was decked out in a color palette of soft tone. Winona said about her home, I can't stand houses where you're afraid to touch anything. There's an authenticity about everything in this house. Anybody would be comfortable here. The back garden was also entirely landscaped with sandstone, river rock and lush plants. In in contrast to Winona's Beverly Hills abode, the New York City apartment was created in a totally different mood. Haley said of decorating this spot, the word that came to mind was glamour. The soaring 18 foot high ceilings and tall windows to match gave the space an urban yet classy feel. The living room was decorated with lacquer panels from the 1930s Manhattan Dance Club as well as a Steinway piano. Winona also has a love for music which was accentuated in the Italian bar decorated with lutes and a violin as well as a 1940s French table with a base shaped like a musical note. In the dining room and bedrooms, there's a mix of contemporary furniture and pieces from the 1930s and 1940s. There are also luxurious textures, adding richness to the muted and pale colors. Now that we've gotten a look at a handful of Winona Ryder's beautiful and timeless properties from Los Angeles to San Francisco and even in New York, that brings this house tour to an end. So what did you guys think? Out of those properties, did you have a favorite? I loved Winona's design taste with all of the vintage glamour and charming romantic accents. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well as whose homes you'd like to see next on this channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't and I'll see you all next time. Bye!